Thanks for tuning in to another episode of WGC Fits. Today we are going to be going over the new Mizuno JPX 923 line. We're going to be working with Ian today. Ian, say hi. Ian says hi. All right. So, a couple of different models here. We're going to go over the Hot Metal, the Hot Metal Pro, and then the Hot Metal High Launch. They're designed for different players in mind to do different things. And we're going to let Ian here kind of hit some and give his opinions on them. There we go, take us away. So what do we have first? We are starting off with the Hot Metal Pro. Um, this is the kind of game improvement iron that's got a little bit of a smaller profile. Um, I figure we start with this one because you use rather small irons in general, so it won't be yeah. too much of a difference for you. Um, key components to this one are basically super forgiving, nice feeling golf club that you are gonna be able to kind of start to work the ball a little bit with due to having a little bit less offset and having a little bit of a smaller profile compared to the hot metal. So let's, uh, let's go through and let's hit some and then we'll see what we end up with. Now the key thing we're gonna be looking at today is gonna to be peak height because there's a new addition to the JPX line, which is a, a fun one, I think. And we'll get to that when we get to that. Now, just to keep everything close to uh, as neutral as we can for Ian, we have this in the shaft he was recently fit into, which is the Project X LS 6.5. And then we are rocking a standard length, standard lie setup. So it's a little Ian's, flatter than what I'm used to, so they should go a little right. Just a little bit, but pretty close to Ian's spec. So the hot metal, right, in general, we think ball speed, kind yeah. of in the name, right? And these are going a long way. These are fast. That is, in general, kind of what, what we're looking at here with these. Good, helpful iron. It's going to help you get the ball up in the air and help you just kind of go out there and smash it and have fun. Yeah. I pulled that one just a smidge. Oh, that was good. Okay, so those are kind of our basic shots here, right? That one's the best one right there. And we can see that it definitely goes a long way. Now, like I said, the number that I am very curious about is the height. That is one of the ones that we are going to focus on today. And your average height on this iron was 118 yards. Which or is feet. normal. 118 feet, I should say. It's, it's a little on the higher side, but it's still within the window that's normal for Ian. Yeah. Is, that a, is that what you would say? I mean, 110 is my normal. Yeah, I've, I've, I would expect 118 out of a game improvement iron for you. Yeah. You know, something a little higher. Um, all in all, pretty good, yeah. right? Now, we're going to do a little bit of a test with all of these now. I want you to hit four shots for me. We're going to hit a high one. All right, we're going to test the workability here. High, low, draw, cut. I had to aim that just a bit left, but definitely went, went high. high. <laughs> definitely went high. Now we're going to go over all the tech, tech specs with these at the end to kind of talk about um, everything kind of new and improved for hot metal this year. But the, it kind of goes into what we're talking about here. Ground high. interaction is important. Let's try a low one. Low is my specialty. That was beautiful. Nice low, under the wind. 100, there you go. The high one went, that was far. The high one went 140, that one went 100. So that is pretty solid. Next one we're gonna try is Ian's favorite shot in golf, a nice little draw. That's a joke, but okay. <laughs> You're lucky I've been practicing. <laughs> Oh, that was perfect. That is a nice little five yard draw. That's beautiful. That He's been practicing, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's hit a cut. Now this actually is his go-to, so. Oh. Money. Get on the 150. Hmm. 
Now, this is something that with these kind of more helpful irons that you don't always have the ability to do, right? No. To be actually able to go out there and start to shape the ball and start to play some shots, right? That's something you can definitely see with this. is important and something that we can actually do with this. And a lot of that has to do with some of the design features that are going into this club. So I would say overall, you hit that really well. Oh, well, right? yeah. It was a little firm for my liking, but that's okay. It's all right. I mean, a little bit different. Like I said, we're going to go over kind of why it feels the way it feels, which is a little bit firmer than what you're used to with your, your forged kind of blade stuff. Um, but it's still, I think, a step in the right direction. Now, next one we're going to try is we're going to do the standard hot metal. So these are all considered rather helpful irons. This one has a little bit more offset than the Pro does. And it's going to have a little bit of a thicker overall profile, especially in the sole and in the top line. It definitely is a very helpful iron. Typically an iron that does really well for Mizuno. Um, all right, we're going to do the same thing here. A couple of shots up front, and then we're going to have the workability test here. In the hole. Now, are you noticing some of the differences between this and the Pro just in your first couple shots? That went high. That went very high. What does the ground interaction feel like with this club? Hard to say. It's hard to say. Okay. It just bounces, I guess. Does it's, Well, the wider the sole, right, what yeah. you're going to get is, especially for those guys who really have a hard time kind of like batting the ball, yeah. right, this is going to kind of help them with that, yeah. you know? That sounded good. All right. Everyone watching back home, this one's going to be fun because now we get to do the workability test. Oh, we got to do the high one? We're going to do the high one, the low one. We're going to do the draw and the cut. That's a launch angle. <laughs> Seven iron flop shot. <laughs> Still carried 200 yards. That's actually disgusting. But that went 147. Oh, it went low. Okay. That was low. I had to aim right, though, so that's okay. Yeah, much lower. Nice. Give me a little, a little draw. Okay. So I guess we technically have to call that a draw. <laughs> hey, it drew, up that, it drew out there. So. It's, it's about as good of a draw as your other one. It's the one yard draw. <laughs> Let's see the nice little cut now. <laughs> there. I'll cut. So you can play this a little bit, right? A little bit. Now, here's the question. Easier or tougher than the pro? Maybe a little harder. A little Only harder? Because I like the pro's offset better. Okay, so so the thing that you're noticing is that the offset is contributing to the ability to work the ball a little bit. For me. Yeah. That's kind of exactly what they're designed for. I'd say yeah. that's pretty good, right? All right, let's look at our peak height numbers real quick here. We're gonna take out the shot shaping test. Peak height, 121. Just about so, the same. It's, it's literally, I think, three feet taller. I think we were at 118 with the other one yeah. before we did our test. So that that is about what I would expect between these two clubs. Now the next one that we're going to try is the hot metal, pro, or hot metal high launch. Loft difference is this has a little bit more loft. So it's designed from the ground up to give you higher launch, but it's also a little bit weaker. So the first two that you hit were 28 and a half degrees. This one's 31 degrees aloft. Okay. So it is a little bit weaker in general, all right? Um, so let's do the same thing. Give me some basic shots here, and uh, then we're gonna do our workability test and see where we end up. I can already tell there's more loft. Definitely more loft, yep. This is one personally I'm quite excited for that. That helpful club that 
that gives you some loft still, which I think is very important. I think that's very, very big for the iron world. Yeah, way high. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's just wow. straight down. <laughs> that is that is an impressive thing to see right there. So what are we thinking of average, like 10, 20 feet higher? I'm guessing on average this is going to end up being probably 10 to 15 feet higher. I wouldn't be surprised if it's more, though. Okay. Now, this obviously isn't a club designed for someone like you, Ian. No. However, it, it still does show kind of the difference between the models. Yes. Which we are seeing the ball go so much higher. I think currently your average height is 135. Okay. That's awesome. Now, from doing fittings, one of the things we always see is that getting the ball up in the air is, is very important across the board for people, yeah. right? And often, um, you know, you sometimes struggle trying to get the launch that you really want to kind of help the ball stopping when you have these clubs that are super, super strong and loft because it yeah. takes a little bit of speed to kind of get something lower lofted into the air. No matter how much kind of tech. people see is do this. Exactly, right? I don't want people adding loft to try to help it in the air. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I am very excited to kind of see this club brought into the market, you know, because, you know, if, you need, if you're a little bit slower, you need help getting the ball up in the air. Yeah. It's a fantastic option. Very. So high. <laughs> so high. Now, it is a bit windy today. Yeah. We've got a pretty strong wind coming into and off the left. So you can see that one. Not the cleanest of strikes, but, you know, there is such a thing as too high. Now, this is going to be fun. How high can Ian hit this ball? It was almost 20 degrees of launch. That's awesome. <laughs> What'd that do? That's got to be 150 plus. Oh, okay. Good try. I'll accept it. All right. Give me a low one. Oh, low. See, the reason why we do this test is to highlight you can still do things with the club, yeah. even though they're designed to kind of fill certain windows. Yeah. Zuno's pretty good at that. Look, to me, that's a draw. So. Patented one yard draw. That was actually probably a two yard draw. No, no, three. You think you got three out of that one? <laughs> that drew the most out of all the draw shots. <laughs> so <laughs> give me a give me a nice little cut. There's the big old Ian that cut. Big, I like it. That's high. Okay. So give me your two second kind of thoughts on each club here. What do you think? This could this one the the high launch could definitely help slower swing speeders. Okay. Because you need the ball to get up. Mm -hmm. Especially where I play, where you got to carry bunkers and water. It's very true. And right. Still hold the green. How about the pro? You think the pro is a good selection for a club where someone kind of needs some help, but they want to start to be able to kind of think about things like shaping the ball and whatnot? Yeah, that, I would agree. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. See. So you think they had a home run? Oh. Out of the park. I think so. Three good, defined and distinctly different models in the hot metal line that I think are really good that are going to help various different players. I mean, right? I mean, they have the pro line to target people like me, but now they got these that are upgraded to hot metals to target even more people. Swing and easy, man. That's yeah. JPX, you know? All right. So let's talk a little bit about some of the tech stuff, right? We've got a little bit of a new material going on with the new hot metal line. Um, JPX line here. It's nickel chromoly, right? So what that is, is that is 30% stronger actually than the material used in the 921 line. Now why they did that was because the face is slightly thinner, right? 
Now, we saw some pretty impressive ball speeds out there, right? We know that when you go thinner, that has potential to produce said ball speed, but we gotta make it stronger to make sure it lasts, right? right? So, slightly thinner in terms of the face, so you need a stronger material. The core rating on this one is actually 8% higher, and the core area is actually 16% larger, which is interesting. What essentially that means is larger sweet spot. And then lastly, we have some variable sole thickness going on here, which is going to kind of help, especially when we're trying to do things like shape the ball, right? Kind of actually get some control down there. So all in all, I think one of the hottest irons out there, the hottest iron in golf just got hotter. If you guys are interested in any of the new JPX 923 hot metal line, come see us at Windmill Golf Center and we'll get you fit up. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you.